Hello and welcome to this week's podcast on the new ports update. I'm Mont Matty, the uh, podcast monkey, and with me I have... I'm Mod Yara, content QA and project lead. Uh, Mod Rowley, I developed this one. And Mod Alex, a senior environment artist. And you're all members of the Guardians. Yes, yeah. right. Yes. One of our retention teams here. Our development teams. Yes. So, you guys have all been working on the new ports release, Guardians of the World. Conveniently named. Indeed, yes. It, it, Almost as if it was planned that way. Almost, yeah. So, what are ports? Okay, well, ports, uh, ports are our, uh, I suppose you call them a minigame, where right. you uh, have a port, conveniently, and you build up a fleet of ships and send them away on voyages in real time to right. explore the eastern lands. And what, what updates was, were made this time? So we had an uh, expansion to the adventurers. We had three new adventurers representing three new skills. Right. Um, we had upgrades to some, most of the buildings. Right. Uh, and other cosmetic upgrades, such as new portals for entering and exiting the instance. Um, we had new rewards, a new type of voyage called Clue Voyages. Loads of stuff. Okay. A whole sleuth of Well, things. let's start with the adventurers. Who are the new adventurers? Uh, we have three new adventurers. Um, the skills were chosen through a player power poll, right? Which was was quite good fun for me because we didn't know what we were going to end up with, and had to. I mean, we had some ideas for characters beforehand. Yeah, I had this idea that I wanted to use some non-human characters because all of the other adventurers in ports are humans, right? So to try and mix things up a bit. Yeah. Uh, so we had a few ideas in mind, but we were waiting for that vote to come in to see what skills we had to then decide how those would interact with you know, the characters re representing those skills, and we refined it from there. Right, okay. So it was kind of like a, a, a I don't know if I can say, but a Mad Libs type thing, where you just throw in some information, and you come up with something. And you, come up, you respond development-wise. Yep. Okay, so the uh, three skills. The first one is agility. Yep, agility. Uh, we have a guy called the Tengu. Right, his, okay. His real name is Sojabo. I'm probably uh, pronouncing that wrong, but uh, that's how I say it. <laughs> right, okay. Uh, for divination, we have uh, the memory, who is, uh, well, she starts off at least called Argy. Okay. And uh, for dungeoneering, we have the exile. And because they don't really have names, she's just referred to as the unburdened world bearer, which is a, a very difficult thing to say. Five times fast, twice. But go. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was very challenged. Go go go. It's hard enough to say once, but yeah. <laughs> see, see if Mod Kiara can instead. The unburdened world. Ah, no. <laughs> I can't <laughs> even go, not, not, even, not once. even once. <laughs> right, okay. Um, and what do they do? What do they provide for each player then? Adventurers, they're kind of like an in to the, the narrative of the Eastern Lands. So right, each okay. of them has an individual story arc. And then we have uh, sets of trio voyages, we call them, where three adventurers team up to take down a more epic storyline together. But they also represent their skill and will give you benefits like XP in that skill. And each of them can get you some trade goods, which are generally what we use to make the rewards with imports. And they do a few other things. And each of them looks really cool. Wow. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so uh, yeah, I remember seeing the concept art sometime before, and they do look incredible. Yeah, these ones are pretty cool. I definitely. think so. Breaking away from the human template that had been set with all the others definitely meant we could make something really interesting. And yeah, something I, th that I really good. think that's really what helped is that we weren't just going for human characters again, and uh, Mod Yan just went nuts with them. <laughs> yeah, as usual. Yeah, he goes a bit. Uh, give him free reign, and he uh, runs with it. And but yeah, they turned out that's really what well. We got and they came out awesome. Mm. Yeah, they look, they look really great. So, clue voyages then. We've got an entirely new type of voyage. Yeah. What are clue voyages? Clue voyages. Um, the, I envisage these as kind of a cross between the story voyages that you can send adventurers out on in that they've each got this kind of goal or this thing that they're trying to find. Yeah. And they will make progress towards that by finding hints and clues around the eastern lands. Uh, and at the end of it, They'll uncover a, a unique voyage for that adventurer that will convey a, a unique benefit within the right. port. Uh, and, the, the, and the other crosses, sorry, they're a bit like clue scrolls as well in that 
sorry, not clue scrolls, as um, forgotten scrolls. Right. So you get them about the same regularity, but you don't just send it out and collect four parts to finish it. There's there's a little bit more to it in that you have to send your adventurer to a specific island in order for them to find the next clue in their hunt for this hidden thing they're looking for. Right, okay. That's it in a nutshell, yeah. And the new map table? The map table is, is what helps you to kind of track down these islands that you need to send them to. Right. Um, and it also increases how often you'll get Clue Voyages to. So if you want to, if you want to play around with Clue Voyages, that's the uh, improvement you want to add to your port. Yeah, the more the better if you want to engage with it. And loads of uh, gear and port improvements. New weapons. Yeah, we've got magic weapons and melee weapons to go alongside the Death Lotus darts for range, which were released with the previous ports update. We've got new scrimshaws, fishing related this time. Yeah. And we've got whopper baiting, whopper baiting scrimshaws. <laughs> Great. And <laughs> casket salvage. Whose fault's that name? We went. <laughs> we, were go, we went initially went with fish flinging scrimshaw, but then we realised it was obviously conflicting with the mini game yeah. naming, so we had um, to go with something else. Well, we jokingly suggested deadliest catching. Yeah. <laughs> um, right. Okay. <laughs> but we wanted to convey the issue with fish flinging and other such things as well was that it felt like you'd failed in some way. Yeah. So whopper baiting is the idea that you've been wrestling with this huge monster fish. Yeah. So you still learned something from the experience, but it, it got away. Yeah. It's the one that got away. So obviously this, this came out of a player poll. Um, did you manage to include everything that you, uh, you'd suggested you were going to in the poll? Oh, there's never really enough time to do everything. I think. <laughs> um, you have to pick and choose and do uh, have as much impact with what you have the time to do. Yeah. for any given project. I mean, you could spend an infinite amount of time and do everything, but then you'd just never do anything else. But we went for a wide range of things, and I think we, we covered a lot of bases. Yeah, especially we cover more spread far and wide and do lots of stuff. To try to appeal to as many players who engage with ports as we could, and even those who don't with the, uh, the changes to the ports outside of ports yeah. to try and get more people playing. There's been quite a few player questions in response to it. I know uh, Modrail has been all over the forums on it. <laughs> Sorry uh, about that. players. <laughs> um, but I, I've, got some, I've got some questions I've spotted. So, the memory... Is the memory technically the last Naraji? Uh, no. Ooh. They're dead. They're, They're all dead. Great. They've been dead yeah. for a very long time. She just looks like a Naragi. She's not actually one. Ah. I suppose to expand on that as well, we... I wasn't looking to bring back an extinct race again. We've done enough of that. Right. But I felt she would have been interesting in character for exploring uh, certain backstories. Yeah, okay. Um, but also just to tug at heartstrings a bit. Yeah, she does have a very... She's, she's a touch point, isn't she? Yeah. It reminds you of yeah. an emotional hook tearing at your heart every time <laughs> you see her. I try. <laughs> <laughs> and are there, uh, do you have any thoughts about uh, a storyline using all 12 adventurers? I think it'd be a great idea. <laughs> ah. A dirty dozen. I don't think they'd yeah, get exactly. a screen time <laughs> between all 12 of them. Yeah. Right. yeah. I reckon if you, you could have a, a couple with maybe some six of one... Six in one, six in another. That would right. be more interesting, but 12 in one, I think you'd be spreading your story across too many characters. Certainly in the way that the story is delivered in ports. I think if you gave them a huge piece of lore content, you could get that kind of... I mean, uh, before we did the podcast, we were talking about this, and I was yeah. kind of against the idea because you wouldn't have enough plot development or character development, and some characters will fall by the wayside. But mm. then... Someone suggesting like Dirty Dozen and Seven <laughs> Samurai, it's like, actually, that's a really cool idea. You'd have to break out of the confines of ports, I suppose, and you'd have to make it into a proper I think so, yeah. a proper quest, quest to do it yeah. justice. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, it. there's some other ways we're looking at delivering law in the next year that might be useful to you guys, but I think that's a, a discussion for off mic. Okay, <laughs> all right, I'm intrigued. I mean, like, Me Meg, Meg has already found her way out of ports, hasn't she, into, uh, into the 200th quest. She didn't get very far, though. No. <laughs> But she's there. Yeah. I, 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 spoilers. It's only a, it's a tiny, <laughs> tiny spoiler. We have to, ta we have to send uh, Mod Osborne out the room sometimes to spoil it. Don't you, don't <laughs> That's you it, I won't, do, I won't do any more. <laughs> I yeah. don't know, we've already shown it on uh, live stream last yeah, week. Yeah, we've shown it on live course. stream. Yeah, yeah. So you might want to go point. check that out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. 
<laughs> got lucky, Alex. You got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Go away with it. Ask to find another one to leak. Then. So the Azure portal, is that a worm there? It's nice, isn't it? Graphics yeah. question. Yeah. Well, it's very pretty. <laughs> Yeah, it did come out looking really nice. I always pictured it as some sort of sea dragon creature. I'm not quite sure where it fits into the lore. It was a, a nice concept that we were, we were given that fits in with the Azure theme. Yeah, I mean, I suppose if like I, they're talking like wormers in the, the old different style of dragon, yeah, yeah, the ancient style, yeah. um, and the, the kind of Asian dragons the Japanese dragons do tend to fit that worm feel more yeah, more of a serpentine look rather yeah. than a, yeah. you know, what you'd call like the runescape dragons that already exist so I suppose you could say you know that's maybe what the worms look like um, but whether or not that portal depicts an actual worm made by the dragon kin or if that creature came from somewhere else is maybe answered through the uh, storyline something for people to explore perhaps <laughs> yes. it's actually based on um the uh, Azure Dragon of Legend. Uh, I'm going to butcher this again, but Serayu? Right, okay. Serayu? Someone can correct me on that. I'm, I'm sure. going to be Wikipedia <laughs> this afterwards. <laughs> um, but the other, the other legendary uh, creatures, um, the Four Winds, are mentioned yeah. in other parts of ports. Yeah. yeah. So we thought, why not just put the Azure Dragon in there where it made sense to? Yeah, yeah. Um, there's been a question about the melee weapons as well. Obviously, the there's two different attack styles. Yeah, well, they're two different types Stabbing. of swords. One of them is a, a long sword and one of them is a short sword. Yeah. Um, Japanese style swords like that often have there's different styles and different sizes. Yeah. So we decided it would make sense to do one as one, one as the other. One is slashing and one is stabbing. Yeah. That's, yeah, just because that's what those swords do for the rest of the game. Um, and the reason, yeah, why was to evoke that feeling of a samurai they would carry different swords for different situations yeah obviously they wouldn't whip both of them out at the same time and <laughs> then start doing meteor strikes and look <laughs> nice what, but we were just going for you know a bit of a feel of that themic yeah yeah Excellent. a bit of wish fulfillment i suppose <laughs> so what did you not get to include that you really wanted to because I, I know you know every development project there's always there's always something you wanted to get in that didn't manage to make the cut i mean Probably more, maybe more clue voyages if we had more time. Could have done clue voyages for the rest of the adventures. Yeah, it would have been nice to yeah get the the other six some clue voyages and hidden islands. Um, partly though, I mean, as nice as that would be, I think we were also kind of happy with putting out the idea of clue voyages and let players getting used to them. Yeah. So that then for a future ports update, yeah. they could suggest what they might want to see from future adventurers in that regard. Absolutely. Yeah. Rather than us just cramming in some maybe not so useful rewards. Okay. Anything art-wise you didn't manage um, to squeeze in? No, I think we ticked all the boxes art-wise. Um, obviously we were constrained with uh, with the time that the other devs had. Yeah. But um, no, I was happy with everything we produced for ports. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, we even crammed in uh, an island there too, which yep. was... Technically, technically in the Eastern Lands? Oh, it's very geographically. Yeah. It's very geographically, much it is. <laughs> it, it doesn't exactly give a lot away. No, <laughs> it's, no. You, um, no it's an eastern island. Well, yes. What do you want? It's an yeah, island exactly. in the east. <laughs> yeah, um, there would of course be the mention of the steel portal. Right. Oh yeah. I think ideally that would have come out with the original release of ports. Okay. And we were so focused on providing uh, locations for the terracotta and the azure. Yeah. That we kind of didn't want to go too far back. Okay. Uh, it would have been a nice addition, but really most people are either beyond that or they haven't got there yet. And if they haven't got there yet, they're more likely to skip over it anyway. And um, before we start recording, you said penguins. Oh, penguins. <laughs> yeah, there, there was a, a distinct lack of submarines in this update. But I'd love oh. to see that penguin submarine <laughs> find its way into port somehow. Yeah, one of these so days. We'll, we'll do a Ports Penguins, I hope, one day in the future, where you'll have <laughs> loads of penguin crew and submarine pens and explore Asheron and all of those islands up in, in the Arctic area. Featuring Ping and Pong. Yeah. Oh. That would be awesome. <laughs> that would be awesome. I'd love that. <laughs> okay, and last question. What, what's your favourite part about the ports update? What's your favourite bit that's in there? Oh, graphic-wise, I do love that, that Azure Dragon portal when, I was, when it was being made by Amar Joe. I kept leaning over his computer going, you know everyone's going to love that. He's like, no, nah, it's going to be a, it's just be another thing. And it's got excellent <laughs> feedback. It's definitely one of my favourite pieces, graphically-wise. Yeah. But rewards-wise, the new uh, scrimshaws are pretty cool for fishing. 
Cool. Bit of extra XP, and there's a the other one is gives you like an extra casket when you catch fish. Yeah, pretty cool. I think the Tengu is probably my favourite. I love the. He looked amazing to start with, but as soon as um, Mod Hing started doing all the idle animation and that for him, it his was, dialogue, it was really, just, his dialogue, and his really dialogue as well. As well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it just gave him so much character. It's it was funny. just it was, so interesting. Compared. It was really good fun to write. Yeah. Um, well, I suppose then I'd have to go the opposite because it was it's between him and the memory from right, okay. my favourite character so I'm going to go with her just because I get to make people cry and <laughs> <laughs> weep their bitter tears yeah it's a very <laughs> bittersweet storyline but she was a great character to bring into the game and I'm glad that I got to do that and uh, I think hopefully in future we can expand upon her character too right okay um, so but if not she's got a very prominent role within imports and, yeah. and that area of the game and there's a good reason why she is where she is so yeah. thanks for coming in and I'd like to talk to you again soon cheers yep, bye bye, bye. bye.